today. If you're with me, I want to tell you a tale. It's one of my favorites. One of those moments in life one does not soon forget. And I, mere mortal that I am, had the privilege to be present for this one, for the creation of the legend. This is the story of Cool Biker Dude. I had a brand new telephoto lens in my hand, standing on the upper floor of our two-story in-town townhome, watching the children play in the cul-de-sac below, zooming in and out and in and out, trying to find out what the capabilities of this new piece of high-tech. There were three megapixels on this bad boy, and it doesn't get much better than that. I could see my daughter, long black hair and her perfect little white porcelain skin, just a tiny, tiny thing. She was about seven, I think seated on the park bench, reading a book and doing her darndest to ignore the rompings of all the little boys around her. Then I could see all the little boys around her, skateboards, scooters and bicycles, and running and jumping and yelling and just all the stuff little boys do. And then my telephoto struck the moment. I caught at that moment my own little boy, about six, standing in the grassy island in the middle of the cul-de-sac. And I believe to this day that my new camera caught that instant when the gleam hit his eye. I could see it. I could even feel it. And I thought, oh. oh. The time. The watershed moment in the life of every man had come. I put the camera down and I made the call. I called his grandfather, my father, and I said, Dad, it's today. The time has come. It's here. Okay. About two hours later, parked in my driveway, is a brand new, beautiful, bright red bicycle with the word <clears throat> mongoose uproariously emblazoned upon the frame. Oh, yeah, baby. Knobby tires in the whole nine yards. This, this puppy was going to get her done. So my wife and I excitedly ran downtown and acquired for ourselves an appropriate bicycle helmet. Now, no. No, not the helmet that the aging baby boomer wears with his bicycle shorts and regains his youth by running around on his 10-speed downtown. His little skinny shorts and the... Oh, my... No. No, 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 no. This is a proper helmet. This is old school. This is how we used to do it. Full face, breathing apparatus right in the middle. Bright red mongoose on one side, flames on the other. This was the kind of equipment legends were made of, and they were about to be. Next to that, we picked up bright red matching gloves, armored knuckles, armored backhand, leather fingertips, leather pads, little teeny tiny things. It, it just doesn't get much better than that. Presenting my son with all of this led him into a bit of a quandary. Not always the bravest soul on the planet, but certainly one up for a good challenge. He stood and stared at these items with trepidation, desire, with fear and thrill. He trusted me, mostly. <laughs> this, eh. We mounted him up and off he went, training wheels. And my biggest concern at this point was, um, was I going to be able to run him around the cul-de-sac for the couple of hours it was going to take to teach him to actually ride a bicycle? Yeah, that may have possibly been somewhat of an issue, but I, 
we did it. Maybe a half hour, hour on the training wheels, and then off came the training wheels, and then pushing him around and around and around until the time was right. Well, the sun was beginning to wax. Wayne? Right. You know, if I wrote these things out, they'd go better. But then again, isn't all life spontaneous? This moment certainly was. But as it grew dimmer in the world, I knew the time had come, and I'm not sure why I did it. Maybe it's just part of my personality. Maybe I never really had a choice. I only imagined that I had a choice. Maybe my son didn't have a choice. Maybe it was the way I was raised. You know, when I was six, I got my first motorcycle and a bright red helmet. And my father took that helmet one evening and by hand, he painted flames all across the side. I've never forgotten that. And I knelt down on the tarmac beside him. All oh, the sound of a smooth flathead. <laughs> a little shake to the frame. He looked at me, not in horror, but in delight. We were creating this together, something that only the mind of a child can truly be free to embrace, to enjoy, and to explore to its fullest potential. And I got close to his helmet and whispered into his ear, all right, you want to be called Cool Biker Dude from here on? Oh, yeah. My name now. It has to be Cool Biker Dude. Let it be announced to the kingdom in all corners. Carried by the fastest messengers. The greatest minds of our time. Henceforth, he shall be cool biker dude. And I gave him the push. And he was down, yep, right then. Whack! You know what, though? We got him back up. We fired off the pan head again. I got a little rev. You could feel the pipes shake. You could just feel it, the ground itself. There's a little bit of thunder to that when the pan head strikes. Cool biker dude, this will stop you. It will not. You will go, you will go, you will go now, yeah. Cool biker dude slows down for very little. Poof, and he was gone gone like a rocket right into the curb and pfft, there it was and that's how these things sometimes go but you know what as i told him one day when he was telling me he wanted to be a hero but he didn't want to get hurt i said well that's kind of the problem with wanting to be a hero is because if you don't get hurt or there was no chance you were going to get hurt well then it probably wasn't really that heroic was it that was a later conversation. Again and again, we fired off the pan head. We got the shake. We got the feel. We knew the narrative. We understood together in this moment what was happening. And by the time the evening had come, he was gone in the night. Around and around and around that cul-de-sac like he owned the place. When I got to his grandparents' home that evening for dinner, my lovely wife, his mother, and my boy, my girl, I had to explain to my mother and my father, he would now be known henceforth as Cool Biker Dude. I think my mother wondered from whence I created such a beast. <laughs> My father was highly considered on the whole thing. Nonetheless, so it was, and so it became. At least for the next couple of weeks. Now, the boys know stupid idiot here, and the chuckles behind the scenes, and the various family member and friends, and the funny looks. Eventually, he began to 
Oh, I see this cool bike. Oh, I get it. Oh, you no, know, I don't. He didn't need that anymore. But you know what? I've noticed in his head, which is a head filled with story, which is a head filled with myth and wonder to this day. It's never really gone away. And it hasn't in me either. You know that once in a while, when things are hard for him, I have found as a father, I can come in close to him. He's in his mid-twenties now. And I can remind him. Cool biker dude. You got this. It is my fondest wish, my joy, my hope that you also get to have these watershed defining moments in your life as a man. The things that we get to do, the things that we get to remember. And don't hold back. Give it everything you got. That's a beautiful thing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the legend of Cool Biker Dude. Thank you.